Hey, Jill. Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to our Oregon Zoo Facebook Live. And my name is Jill. I'm one of the bird keepers. I'm going to talk to you it's down here in our African Lagoon exhibit. And what we have here is I'm going to tell you a little bit about our flamingos. If you have questions for me, you can write them down below in the comments. And after we're done, there's also going to be a link that you can go and you can click on that and you can find some activities um, that involve flamingos that you can do at home yourself. So here at the Oregon Zoo, we actually have two different types of flamingos. We have got the lesser flamingos and the greater flamingos. They are pretty easy to tell apart because of their size. So these are the two species of flamingos that are found in Africa. And they do live in the same area in Africa together. So this is actually really common that you would see them together in an area like this. So the lesser flamingos are the smaller ones. They are the brighter pink ones right now. We have 12 of those. And they have been here at the Oregon Zoo for about 10 years now. They came to us from San Antonio Zoo in Texas. And those are all boys. Then we also have the greater flamingos. So up close this here, dancing in the water now, that's one of our greater flamingos. You can see they are called greater flamingos because they're taller. Um, here at the Oregon Zoo, we have five greater flamingos. We've got three boys and two girls. And the reason that they look different as well from the lesser flamingos are you know, speak up Oh yeah, sorry guys. Uh, the lesser flamingos are a little bit bigger. You can see they're bigger, they're also paler. And that's mostly because they are still young birds. So they are nine months old. They are full grown, so they're just about full grown. They actually will get a little bit taller, but they're gonna keep getting pink as they get older. Um, so Ronan wants to know why are flamingos so good at standing on one leg? Hi Ronan, that's a great question. So actually all birds stand on one leg very often. You notice it a lot more with flamingos because their legs are so long so they pick their legs all the way up so it's really noticeable. We're not exactly sure why flamingos and all birds do that but we think that it helps them rest and just be more comfortable while they're resting. It could also help them stay warmer. Um, while they have that leg up in their feathers, that leg is staying warmer and it can help heat up uh, the rest of their blood in their body and travel down to the leg that's down in the water. That's Gre a good question. Greta and Lucas are asking, uh, why are some of them pink? Why are some of them pink? That's a great question. So I said that a little bit about that. So our greater flamingos, which are the larger ones, and we're going to hope and see if any of those will come a little bit closer to us. <laughs> I just gave them a little bit of breakfast, so they might just be busy eating their breakfast. Those ones are not as bright pink right now because they're still young. So they're nine months old and they hatched here at the Oregon Zoo. And they are not gonna be all the way pink until they are about two years old. So it's a gradual process. They will keep turning pink the older they get. You can see they're sort of pale. In this bright sunlight, they actually look really white. But up close, you can see they are a pale pink color and uh, they're gonna keep getting more pink as they get older. So by the time they're two years old, they will be pretty much all the way pink. Logan is asking, why do flamingos have such long necks? Why do flamingos have such long necks? That's a great question. So you can see, uh, you might be able to see this flamingo here. She's got her neck down in the water. They've got that long neck because they're filter feeders. So they reach down there into the water and they filter out uh, the food out of the sand and the water. So they need those long necks to be able to reach down to the water and reach their food in the water. Isabella is asking, how do they sleep? How do they sleep? That's a great question. So a lot of times flamingos will sleep uh, even when they're in the water. So that's when they'll typically get up on one leg and they will just tuck their head back um, along their back and they will go to sleep that way. But when they are on land, they will actually lay down and they'll sleep laying down. Just one of our spoonbills is joining us. So who's this here? This is one of our African spoonbills. Uh, so we are in our African lagoon bird aviary. So we've got all sorts of different birds in here. We've got some ducks some spoonbills, some ibis up there. So the spoonbills coming and checking out to see if I have anything. Now she left. Let's see if she comes back. We got some ducks here, more spoonbills back there, all kinds of birds. Audrey's asking, how much food do the flamingos eat? How much food do the flamingos eat? Uh, they get to eat as much as they want. So flamingos are pretty good about eating only what they need to eat. So we actually just feed them as much as they want. Uh, we put out enough food we get used to it we feed them every day so we kind of are used to how much they eat so we put the same amount if we notice that they don't have any left then we feed them more later or the next day so we'll increase their food but they get to eat as much as they want
Marissa's asking if they're always in groups. Are flamingos always in groups? That's a great question. They are very social birds. So they do live in large groups. In Africa, they can live in groups up to thousands and thousands of birds. Uh, they're most comfortable when they're in large groups. They feel safe. Uh, they feel protected by the flock. And yeah, that's how they're most comfortable. And they do are usually always in large groups. Quentin is asking, do flamingos have ears? Do flamingos have ears? They do have ears. Uh, their ears, they don't have outside ears like we do. They just have a hole in the side of their head and it's covered up uh, by their feathers. Okay, so James is asking, where do flamingos live in the wild? Where do flamingos live in the wild? There, there are actually six different types of flamingos in the world. Uh, four of them live over in the Americas. So um, the very southern part of North America and then Central and South America. And the other two species live over in Africa. So these two are the African species, um, the greater and the lesser flamingos. So the bigger ones and the smaller ones. Uh, they both live in Africa and the greater flamingos also live up in Europe and over into Asia as well. Valerie is asking if any species of flamingos are in danger. Are any species in danger? Um, there are. Some of the ones that live down in Central and South America are endangered. Uh, these two species are not. Uh, they, their numbers are pretty high in Africa. The lesser flamingos, the smaller ones, they are considered near threatened. And that is because their nesting areas, they only nest in a few areas in Africa. And if any of those areas got really disturbed, it would be a really huge blow to their population. So uh, they want to make sure that they stay protected for them. So they are listed as threatened. Uh, but their numbers are doing really well right now. Orange wants to know, uh, are flamingos migratory? Are they migratory? That's a great question. They do migrate around Africa. Uh, they move where the water is. So the flamingos live in lakes and salt lakes and estuaries uh, where they can find food. And they will migrate if they need to to find um, more lakes for them to feed and nest. Them. And McKaylee is asking if the sounds they make mean anything. What are they communicating to each other? That's a great question. Do the sounds they make mean anything? They do. Flamingos are very vocal animals. They use sounds to communicate a lot. Um, they all mean different things. So when you're around them a lot, you kind of get used to the sounds. <laughs> they talk to each other a lot. They make lots of grunts and honks. They sound like geese sometimes. And they'll make all sorts of vocalizations. They also do one when it's breeding season. They will start to parade and they'll vocalize together to get in sync and they will actually bring back and forth and they will do a synchronized uh, breeding display, which is really cool. If you look that up on YouTube, it's a really interesting thing to see. And the vocalizing helps them coordinate that. Avery is asking, and, uh, and Lily, so both asking, what are some of the flamingos predators? What are some of the flamingos predators? Flamingos are vulnerable to a lot of things, especially during the nesting season. Uh, their nests get raided by uh, hyenas, jackals, baboons, even birds like storks or eagles might come down for chicks. Um, so that's when they're most vulnerable because they are nesting, so they're in one location. Uh, adult flamingos don't have a lot of predators. Some of those animals might be but they usually are in large groups. It can be hard to pick out one bird, so that offers them some protection. Crystal is asking if the different species of flamingo can breed. Can they interbreed? I don't think so. That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that, um, but I don't think so. Uh, usually they live in such different areas that that would happen. So with these spoonbills, can you tell us about uh, these amazing bills that they have and why they have this adaptation? Sure. So these spoonbills live in the same sort of environment as the flamingos. Uh, they live in shallow lakes and estuaries and marshy areas. So they use these sensitive spoonbills. Uh, the end here is very sensitive. It's got lots of nerve endings in it. So they stick it in the mud and they sweep it around and they feel for insects and uh, worms and fish and any sort of critters they can find. And so that's how they find their food. We've also got our ibis down here. Camille and Lexi are asking how flamingos build their nests. How do flamingos build their nests? That's a great question. So flamingos nest on mounds. They actually build a mound out of clay or sand and they do it, I usually describe it the way if you've ever made a sand castle at the beach by letting wet sand run through your fingers. Flamingos pretty much do it the same way. So they lift up wet sand and they let it dribble out of their mouth and they slowly make 
a mound, uh, then they stand in the middle and they make it around themselves and they make it uh, taller and taller and then they lay one egg on top of it. Danielle's asking if flamingos live in rocky areas. Can you talk a little bit about the type of habitat that they live in? Sure. So flamingos, uh, they usually, they're pretty much always near a body of water. So they tend to like salt or alkaline lakes because that kind of protects them from predators because other animals don't really want to come near the really salty or uh, alkaline water. And they live in lakes, estuaries, swampy areas, pretty much anywhere with water. They don't usually like rocky areas. They want to be on flat spaces. Flamingos are not good animals, so they like to be on flat, solid ground. Krista wants to know how many uh, chicks do flamingos have? How many chicks do flamingos have at a time? They typically lay one egg uh, each year, so they usually have one chick at a time. And mom and dad will both uh, not only help sit and incubate the egg, they will also help raise the chick together. Allison's asking, can flamingos defend themselves can, against predators? Can flamingos defend themselves against predators? Their best defense is to stay with the group um, and kind of hide amongst the group of all the other flamingos. But they are able to fly, so that's a question we get asked. Do flamingos fly? Uh, they can fly, so they could fly away from predators if they need to. <laughs> Just going to help yourself. Madison's asking how fast they can run. How fast they can run? That's a good question. I'm not sure of that one myself. Um, typically they run when they're going to fly, so I don't think they run for long distances. So Camille is asking, again here, um, some of the folks who might have missed it, why are some of these uh, um, white and some of them pink? Why are some of the flamingos white and some of them are pink? So our older flamingos are the smaller ones, those are our lesser flamingos, and we estimate they are 30 to 40 years old, so they're fully pink, they're all adults. Uh, the greater flamingos are the larger ones, and they are lighter, white in color, and that is because they're young. So they are nine months old, and they're just about full grown in size, but they're not going to be all the way pink until they're about two years old. So flamingos, when they hatch, are white, and then they turn gray in color, and then uh, as they get older, they, they uh, develop that pink color very slowly, and it takes time for that to happen. Janelle's asking what this bird over here with the iridescent feathers is. That one, that is our Hedata ibis. I love their feathers, they're really beautiful in the sun. Uh, ibis use their long beak very similarly to the way the flamingos and the spoonbills do. So they live in the same environment, the marshy wetland areas. And they use that beak to probe down into the sand and the dirt and find worms and insects and fish. So we've got Hedata ibis, and then I don't think any of them came down. We also have, oh, back there on the tree. We've got the wall wrap ibis, and those are a very highly endangered species of ibis uh, that we just got here at the zoo this last year. So Kaylee and Alex are asking, even though they have um, skinny legs, are their legs strong? Are flamingo legs strong? Uh, they are skinny. I don't know if I would say they're strong, but they are tough. Uh, flamingos are a lot tougher than they look. They look really delicate, but they're pretty tough birds. Ivy is asking, what sounds do flamingos make? Flamingos make, those are our whistling ducks, they're whistling, you might be able to hear them. Jill, can you speak up a little? Yes, sorry. Um, flamingos make a lot of honking noises, a lot of kind of, they sound like geese sometimes, or even, uh, yeah, like geese and ducks, they kind of make honking noises. To Tova's asking, why do flamingos eat shrimp? Why do flamingos eat shrimp? That's a great question. So flamingos are filter feeders. And see if we can see. One of them is kind of dancing her little feet over there. Should we go over there and take yeah, a look? Yeah, we'll go over here. So we'll go over and see what flamingos are doing. See if anyone will come over today. Hi. So flamingos are filter feeders. So they typically stand in the water and a lot of times they will dance their feet around and that helps stir up the things on the bottom of the water. And they filter feed. So they put their head under and they filter out. So they not only eat tiny mites that have the shrimp and krill, but they will also eat blue green algae, little plants, little insects, uh, even small fish or uh, species that they find in the water. And all the things that they eat, have carotenoids in them, and carotenoids are the things that make the carrot orange. 
And we start to deposit into their feathers, and that's what we come up with in a beautiful form. Danielle's asking, can you tell us uh, some of these flamingos' names? Yeah, so our lesser flamingos, the older boys, they don't have names. They all have little ID um, bracelets on their legs so we can tell them apart. But these five greater flamingos here that are all in the water now, we delivered them here at the zoo. So we have them for nine months and we named them after lakes. So as I've been saying, the lakes and waterways are really important to flamingos in Africa. So we named them all after lakes in Africa. So right here in front of me is Tanganyika, uh, which is the lake, they're all lakes in Africa. Kudu uh, is over there with his head in the water. We've got um, Bianca, is number two. Right behind her is. Yeah, sorry, can you speak up? Yep, I'm know? sorry, guys. I'm having a hard time hearing you today. Um, I'm like, I'm like, oh, Malawi is here coming in the water, and then uh, Ziwe is all the way in the back there. So they're all named after lakes in Africa. So I, I didn't catch the name, but we had a good question about why their bills are curved. Why are their bills curved? So as I was saying that they eat their filter feeders and they filter stuff out of the water. So having that curved beak helps them when they put their head down there in the water. Um, it kind of goes upside down. You can see where it curves and it's flat along that front edge there. They can put that flat side uh, on the bottom of the water and run it along and then they open and close their mouth and run water through there. So that curved beak helps them get right down there in the mud and filter out all those good little bugs and critters and uh, algae in the water. Who's this little buck who's coming up here? Let's see, uh, that is our Makoa, and they are a duck from Africa, so all the birds in here are African birds, and Makoas are strictly water ducks. <laughs> They, when they get out on land, they look really awkward. So if you ever are here at the zoo and you see them up on land, they're very awkward. But they are made to be in the water. But he's got that bright blue beak, that's our male. And he gets that to attract the female. And she's actually over here on land. She's not looking too awkward. She's proving me wrong. And we'll take one last question here from right. Alan. And Michael, you might want to not put it the bubbles there. <laughs> The, uh, is asking how many flamingos do we have here? We can come back over here where it's easier sure. to hear. Yes. Flamingos are enjoying the sun today, so I don't blame them. So here at the zoo, we have uh, 17 flamingos total. We've got 12 of the lesser flamingos, uh, which are back here behind me, the smaller ones. And then we've got five of the greater flamingos as well. So that's about it for us today, guys. So thanks for joining us here on Facebook Live. And uh, like I said in the beginning, we're gonna have a link in the description of this. You can follow that link and you can uh, find some activities that you can do at home that involve flamingos. And also, uh, if you have the means, we could really use some help um, here at the Oregon Zoo. We are here taking care of the animals and we are here working all the time. So if you have the means, you can go to OregonZoo.org slash donate. Uh, if you can donate some money, that would really help us and the animals out. So enjoy the rest of your day and be safe out there, guys.